Good morning, Wednesday the 8th of February 2012. Chris Whedon with today's United Kingdom talk. You've all got a little bit quiet. I don't know why. No emails suddenly. Where have all the emails gone? What's going on there? How strange. Are you, are you still there? Are you still there? Please don't frighten me and tell me that you've passed away or something like that. I should be most disappointed if you do that and don't say anything to me. You know, I love you so much. I wish I'd given birth to each and every one of you. I really do, boys and girls. And especially today, we wish we'd given birth to Laura, who informed me on a little bit late, actually. I think it was on yesterday, uh, Tuesday, that it was her birthday. Was it your birthday yesterday, Laura? If only you told me then, I would have sung happy birthday to you. Unfortunately, now it's Wednesday, so it's too late, so I'm not going to sing to you. Please get your request. <laughs> Please get your requests in nice and early for your birthdays, and I'm only too pleased to sing for you completely free of charge. There are some people that would want to charge you for their birthdays. I will sing to you free of charge. i tell you what later. As a belated birthday, La sorry, Laura, as a belated birthday, I shall sing to you now, my darling, OK? I haven't got any music today because uh, the computer just uh, crashed. So I've had to turn it off. So I shall be singing today a cappella. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Laura, for yesterday. Happy birthday to you. Yeah! All right, Laura. Happy birthday. I haven't seen you down at my karaoke nights recently. Why is that? Don't you love me anymore? Is that what's going on there? Have I become old and unfashionable. Oh, well, there's a surprise. I think that happened a few years ago, actually, Laura. Anyway, happy birthday. Hope you had a nice birthday, my darling. OK? A um, few bits of uh, news today. I see uh, the gas prices, the wholesale gas prices, have now risen sharply since the cold weather came in. Surprise, surprise. Isn't it awful? I, ju I just feel like things like gas, water, electricity should not be there for profit. The story on the BBC website. Gas price rises as freezing weather bites across Europe. It's seen gas demand soar. Well, of course it has. I mean, state the obvious, you know. <laughs> it gets cold. We put the heating on. Hello. Uh, the cold weather has seen gas demand soar, demand soar across Europe. It says um, the price of gas around Europe has risen sharply. UK gas... <clears throat> for next day delivery reached 93 pence a firm, which is the highest for more than six years. It marks a rise <coughs> of it marks a rise of 24% in the UK price for gas since Friday. It's shocking, isn't it? It's shocking how they profit out of people's misery like this. It says, in addition, Italy. Uh, has decided to ration the supply of gas to industrial customers after receiving insufficient gas from Russia. It says prices have soared even higher in France, which is struggling to meet demand, reaching the equivalent of almost £1.02 per firm. I wonder why they pay more in France for their gas than we do then. I wonder why that would be. It just seems a little bit unfair, doesn't it? It says companies supplying residential customers rarely buy gas on the next day market, but it is relied upon by some big commercial unit. I mean, it's just shocking, isn't it? Just shocking. It also says, uh, like so much of Europe, Italy has been enduring intense cold and heavy snowfalls. Uh, families have been consuming huge amounts of gas in an effort to keep warm. I mean, that, that's why. That's, that's the only reason why we're buying more, because we're cold. You know, because we're cold. It's just so unfair. It's so, so wrong. Um, lots of people dying in, in Europe as well because of the cold weather. They just can't afford to put the, uh, the heating on. You know, no one should have to die wherever they are because they can't afford um, to put the heating on. Um, I'm sure there's something to do with Russia here as well somewhere. Is it to do with the Russians again? Uh there have been concerns in recent days about gas supplies from Russia um, because they lowered supply a few days. I don't know what all that's about. It's just like a power trip, isn't it? You know, it really is. And it's so, so unfair to increase prices whenever people are miserable and cold. I, 
um, use as little gas and electricity as I possibly can. I mean, I absolutely do. I object to, to paying large sums of money uh, for what I think should be considered a human right. I absolutely do. Uh, your thoughts on that, please, Chris? Uh, UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Uh, another story on the BBC site yesterday. Uh, MPs and peers are demanding law against stalking. A new law making stalking a specific offence, because it wasn't an offence, is needed in England and Wales. Uh, because a lot of the stalking actually ends up, well not a lot, but some of the stalking ends up in violence and murder, MPs and peers have said. Uh, their parliamentary inquiry also proposed restrictions on offenders. And um, I, I do hope something is done about this. Because it's frightening. I've had it myself. I've had it myself. It wasn't so much frightening in my case, I've had it a couple of times actually, on, on all occasions it's not so much frightening I found for me, it was just a bloody annoyance. You know, I'd have the phone ringing at all times of day and night, really. And you unplug, and then you unplug all the phones, right? This seriously is what happened to me. I'd unplug all the phones at night, and then I'd go in the morning and I'd plug one in and I'd see if they've stopped ringing. And you'd plug it in in the morning and it would ring straight away. It's, it's awful. Having a stalker, first couple of days, oh, it's quite funny, I've got a stalker. It is, not, believe me, it's not funny. The phone just does not stop ringing. And also, uh, about, oh, about 15 years ago, I had someone who kept coming into clubs and following me around where I was DJing. You know, it's, 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 it's annoying. It can't, well, of course, if you're a woman, it'd be much worse, I would imagine. But uh, uh, for a man, it was just downright annoying. Go away. And, you, and you're like, you know, you can't get rid of this person. And you close your eyes and you just don't know what to do. You cannot get rid of them. A bit, little bit like the squirrels in the attic last year. You know, have you ever had a stalker? What's it like? Let us know. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, good news for those of you that get really fed up going in shops, buying items, and having these damn extended warranties shoved down your throat. Ever heard that? Dixon's Comet and Argos, I mean, I, in my opinion, Dixon's or, or, uh, and Comet, uh, in, in particular, Dixon's or Curry, what are they called? Curry.digital? What is it called? Curry's Digital? Curry's dot the worst name ever. <laughs> you know, for for a, a shop that sells electrical goods. That, that, Curry's dot digital. It doesn't exactly roll off your tongue, does it? It used to be called Dixon's. Nothing wrong with the name Dixon's, that was fine. And then some idiot come along, probably earned a fortune out of renaming the shop. Curry's dot digital. Anyway, uh, Dixon's Comet and Argos, with I think in my particular mind, Dixon's, i.e. Curry's dot digital, they are the worst offenders. Absolutely the worst offenders. They've pledged to improve the way instead extended warranty uh, for the electrical stuff that they sell um, uh, 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 is going to happen like televisions, you know, radios, recorders of all sorts. Uh, measures include providing more information for shoppers and launching a price comparison website. About time as well. Have you ever bought, have you recently bought a television set only to be offered the extended warranty? And it's usually about a third of the price. You know, so if you pay £300 for the television, the extended warranty is going to cost you another £100. It's an awful lot of money, isn't it? I mean, it really is an awful lot of money. I don't think I actually have extended warranties on anything anymore. I used to get it on washing machines. If I bought a washing machine uh, for myself or indeed one of the, uh, one of the uh, flats that I let out, then I usually bought the extended warranty. But I've, I've even stopped buying it on there now because they've got so expensive. Um, but uh, what's going to happen... There it is. Uh, uh, right... Just a minute, let me see, where is this? Uh, the RFT has looked into extended warranties which ensure owners against cost of repairing uh, products and consumer groups have raised concerns that these warranties some most, almost cost as much as the product itself. You know, I, I, I must admit I haven't seen them that expensive. You know, but for, say, if I was buying a television for £300, to me, a fair price for the extended warranty would be about 50 quid, not 100. 
A hundred pounds for an extended warranty, wouldn't buy one. OK, if it was about 50 quid, 40 quid or 50 quid, that seems a little bit more reasonable to me. Does it you? Have you bought any items and also bought the extended warranty? What was your experience of that? Did you find it expensive? Did you have to claim on the extended warranty only to find that your claim was withheld or, you know, they found some, some excuse to wriggle out of it. That's the other thing I feel about in, insurance companies all the time. You know, I, I never trust them. I just think it's an awful lot of money. And then they start wriggling and squirming and they try and get out of paying anything, don't they? I hate insurance companies. I, I absolutely hate insurance companies. Uh, under current rules, what they have to do, uh, you've got 30 days to buy that extended warranty, OK? So you can take your TV set home okay, uh, and in the shop you will say, I will think about it. Now, I can guarantee you at that point they will sit you down and try and convince you to buy it there and then. And then at the end of it, mis miraculously, a manager will come over and offer it to you for half price. This has happened to me on more than one occasion. You stand there, uh, no thank you, I don't want the extended warranty. And then they go, and then they get this book out and they say, do you know how much it will cost if it goes wrong? And out comes this book, out of the pocket, and they start flicking through this bloody book, right? And it, do you know how much is a cost, when, you know, when it goes wrong? And I'm like, no, not really. And then they say, oh, well, uh, just to bring it in would cost you £80 plus VAT. Bastards, ain't they, eh? Bastards. <laughs> And then I say no again. And then like they shake their heads and go, just a minute, sir, I'll come back. And then they come out with the manager or with a message from the manager or on the, on the phone. That's a good one. Would you come to the desk, sir? So you go to the desk. No, just give me the item or just come to the desk. They pick up the phone, make them up. OK, I've just spoken to the manager and he's happy to do you the extended warranty for half the price at £45. All right. Do not buy this thing in the shop, but you've got to do it there and then. You know, that old trick, got to do it there and then. You do not have to buy an extended warranty for anything. And when you get home, you have, by law, under current rules, by law, you have up to 30 days, and this needs to be should be explained to you in the shop. They're supposed to tell you this. You can have up to 30 days to buy the extra insurance cover. This is according to the BBC uh, news site, OK? There is also a 45-day cooling off period. So if you bought your extended warranty in the shop, within 45 days, you could uh, cancel it. Although my guess is that would be quite difficult. I mean, they're not going to make it easy, are they? And I wonder how many people say, oh, we lost it in the post. We lost it in the post. Don't they? Oh, I hate them. There we are. Good news there on the uh, extended warranties. Well, I'm sitting here. I know it's Wednesday for you, but I'm recording this on the Tuesday. Uh, I'm staying in today because my seat, I'm waiting for my, talking of things coming through the post, I'm waiting for my new CB stuff to come. It's not here yet. The only thing is it's a bit cold outside and a little bit funny putting the aerial up. You know, I'm not sure where I'm going to see, sit, situate my CB equipment in the living room or next to the bed so I can talk to people. Well, maybe I shouldn't have it in the bedroom. Uh, it might stop me sleeping, mightn't it? You know, just turn it. It's so easy to just turn it. Oh, I wonder if there's anyone on turn it on. You'd be up half the night. I used to be on the CB radio uh, in the 80s and literally you would be up half the night talking to people about absolutely nothing. <laughs> A little bit like watching this show, really, isn't it? Eh? How dare you? Don't be rude if you don't mind. Can I just turn something on? One second. I'm just going to turn a couple of things on here. Uh, as I say, my computer crashed earlier. I've, I've got a feeling it's the, um, the mouse uh, that's given me a problem. Might have to get a new mouse. Lots of things are going wrong at the moment. And something else that's gone wrong, I'm afraid, is uh, the quiz night on Sunday at Belushi's in Hammersmith has been cancelled. God's sake, another night off. So it's two nights a week I have off at the moment, Saturday and um, Sunday as well. Anyone know anyone who wants a, an ageing DJ, karaoke coast, host, uh, what, what am I, what, a quiz show host, bingo caller? Anyone want one of those people on Saturdays or Sundays? I haven't decided what I'm going to do this Saturday yet. I was asked to DJ at a, a, a club, but I'm not sure that my music is going to be suitable for that club. It's, I think it's quite um, heavy and hard in there. I don't know. Or maybe I should just go in there and do my own thing. It's, it's, it's a bit difficult to know, really. Sorry, just pushing some more buttons. I'm, I'm trying to log in. 
a little bit of a trouble with, with one of the computers today. Is this going to come up now? Oh, it's asked for the password, so that's worked. Uh, but this one keeps crashing for some reason. Anyway, so that's a, a shame, really. The quiz night in Hammersmith uh, has uh, been cancelled now. But there you go. It's, that's the way the cookie crumbles, I'm afraid. Um, I, I really enjoyed that night. <laughs> and that's a, a couple of things have, have, have sort of finished over the last few months. We had the, the DJing night in Hammersmith on Saturday. What, all these, most of these things were in Hammersmith. The karaoke night in Hammersmith on Mondays, the karaoke night in Fulham on Tuesdays. Oh, it's, it's, it's a testing time, to be honest. I'm a little bit down about all the work, because I like to work. You know what I mean? I like to be out working. So I, I don't know uh, what's going to happen there, really. Uh, fingers crossed I find something else on Sundays. You, you know, you put the word around and you make phone calls about the fact that you're out or, you know, you're looking for something and, and there's nothing coming back at the moment. You know, uh, a couple of years ago, I don't think a, a month went past without someone sort of coming up to me somewhere and saying, oh, hello, have you got any nights free or something like that? It just seems to have stopped. Uh, talking to a few of my other DJ friends and karaoke people, and it, you know, it, it's just so many places closing at the moment. You know, there really are a lot of places closing and it's difficult to find new places to go and work in. You know, if you've got a job, hold on to it. Uh, anyone see uh, the Super Bowl thing the other night? No, I'm not interested in the Super Bowl at all. I was interested in Madonna. Now, I'm not one of those huge Madonna <coughs> mad people who follow her around everyone, sing her praises like she's, um, like she's a, a god or something like that. But I quite like her. Um, she was also on the Graham Norton show the other day here in the UK, looking absolutely beautiful. She And she's got a dry sense of humour, Madonna, isn't she? I quite like her dry sense of humour. You know, uh, she was saying that she went skiing on this. This is on the Graham Norton show a little while ago. And she had the, the mask on and that. And she said, the, the thing is, when you've got all these this skiing gear on, the goggles, the hat, the mask, you know, you become part of the crowd. No one really knows who you are. And she said it was dreadful. People were not moving out of the way and bumping me left, right and centre. And Graham Norton said, hello, welcome to the real world, you know. <laughs> and I saw her, uh, um, I just saw a bit of a concert someone uploaded to, I think it was Facebook. Uh, I'm on Facebook, by the way, if you want to join me on Facebook. My Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK, all right? Chris Reardon UK, my Facebook username. Anyway, uh, and someone uploaded the, uh, her performance at the Super Bowl on Facebook. Oh, how fantastic was that? She came in, she was carried in sort of by, by gladiators pulling this, uh, this like throne that she was sitting on and she started off doing Vogue and all the hand. It was fantastic. What a fantastic show and good, good on Madonna. May she go on for thousands and thousands of more years. I mean, just fantastic. No one has got anything on Madonna. As far as I'm concerned, they never have and probably never will have. I've got, apart from, of course, Shirley Bassey and people. We like Shirley Bassey. And, of course, the wonderful Barry Manilow, who I'm going to see uh, in May with my uh, lovely niece. Um, car news. I'm afraid the fumes are coming back in the car. <clears throat> now, it doesn't smell like the same smell it smelled last time. It smells like white spirits. There's a white spirit smell coming in the car when I've got the air thing set to go outside to in, not on recirculate. So we've got to go back down the garage and uh, have another look at that, I think, especially as a pay dirt to have that fixed. I mean, the, the actual smell that was there before, the diesel smell that I recognised is is not there unless it smells like that and I'm just not detecting it I don't know or maybe it's like a very weakened form of that it's, but it smells like white spirits or turpentine very odd smell coming into the car um I think it's very sad news that America look like they're gonna pull out of the Mars mission that's going on they were supposed to be doing a collaboration uh, between the Americans and the European uh, space agency, but it looks like they're not willing to put up the money, or probably the money's been, been cut from some budget somewhere. 
and uh, it's not looking good for the Mars mission. Now, it's going to send around a, a satellite around Mars and a little robot on there to collect samples and do experiments and things like that. I think uh, the Europeans are now going to ask the Russians if they want to come in for it. But I, I do think it's a great shame when, when science projects like that, and especially like space things and what have you, they don't have the money to do it. And, you know, something like this would be for the good of the human race. A little bit like looking, searching for uh, disease uh, uh, things, uh, pills, what do they call it, um, vaccinations and... Um, oh, what, what, what word am I looking for now? I always forget words, don't I? Have you noticed? It's the Alzheimer's is setting in again, you see. They, it is. Cures. Cures for terrible, terrible diseases and things like that. You know, I, I, I just wish that we didn't perhaps sometimes have a system which involved having to pay money to find these things. Why can't we just find them? You know, why can't we give these wonderful scientists houses and places to live in so that they can carry on with their work and it actually doesn't cost anything? It's always about cost, isn't it? And when it comes to something like that would forward the human race, uh, I wish they could find some other way of doing it so that we would not have to rely on money and pull out of such a, a, a wonderful thing as, as sending another little thing to Mars to collect bits and pieces and, and find out all about it. I, I absolutely hope that I am still alive to see some sort of um, star travel, you know? you get on a spaceship and you go to other planets and things like that. I think that would be just wonderful. I hope I'm alive to see that. I really do. And I think perhaps, you know, we might someday have to leave this planet. I think, I personally think at some time in the future, I don't know when, that we will probably pollute this place so much there'll be no oil, no gas, there'll be no coal, there'll be nothing left. And we'll have to move somewhere else. You know, God knows how you're going to move so many people like that. But I, I, I just think that that will happen at some point, you know. But a shame, you know, a shame if that Mars thing uh, all falls apart. And uh, finally today, uh, BT text to phone. If you're in the UK, uh, you may know about that. That's the thing where you can actually send a text message and it becomes vocalised, OK? to someone's house phone who does not lo have like a, a little text um, screen on it. You know, so you, 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 you type your text in and you put in your landline number and when, when the phone rings and at the end of the phone, uh, they say, hello, this is a text for Chris. And it starts reading the text. Now, um, I, I'm a bit funny sometimes about answering the phone, especially as I had that stalker for uh, a long time. Was it last year or the year before? It might have been the year before now, actually. I think it was the year before that, 2010, possibly. And I'm a bit funny answering the phone to unknown numbers, and I kept getting this number come up, 0800 uh, something 1111 or 0845, I think it was. And, of course, I kept ignoring it, you know. And eventually I thought I'd come up on the computer and I put the number in and I found out it was BT's text to phone service and someone was trying to send me a text. You know, actually I found out who it was and it was quite legitimate and, you know, no problem at all. Just to wish me a happy birthday, actually. But I kept seeing this unknown number come up on the phone. And it was calling at all hours. I mean, it really was. It would ring like at one o'clock. I think it was about half past 12 or one o'clock in the morning on uh, Sunday night. And I thought, oh, I've had enough of this. And that's when I wrote down the number and looked it up on the internet and found out it was the BT text to phone service. Uh, I then find out that there are, um, you can bar this service so it doesn't come to you. So that's what I've done now. OK, so no one can now send me the text to phone uh, thing because I've switched it off. You can, you can actually switch that off by going on the Internet and following uh, some rules, uh, some instructions on there. Uh, or you don't have to switch it off completely. What you can do is set it so that it will not ring, say, after eight o'clock at night until nine o'clock the next morning or something like that. So if you want to look at that, just type in BT um, text to phone service and that will tell you all about it. OK. That's it uh, from the show today, boys and girls. Thanks very much uh, for joining me. Being a Wednesday night, I am hosting karaoke tonight, boys and girls, at Belushi's in Borough High Street in London. If you want to come down to that, it's 10pm 
till 2 a.m. Okay, once again, karaoke tonight, uh, every Wednesday night, every Monday and Wednesday night, uh, between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. at Belushi's in Barra High Street. Don't forget the email address. Yes, don't leave me sitting here alone. I've got no emails at all waiting at the moment to be read out, so send a few in. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. See you on the next show. Bye-bye.